In this video, we'll talk about what is blockchain. Now, in the previous video, we know that blockchain is important and it solves one important thing, which is the trust issue. Of course, right on the internet, we don't trust anything and that's why we need this centralized system. If we talk about banking, social media, everything is centralized. Now, what exactly centralized means? Centralized simply means that someone is in control. It can be a person, it can be an entity, it can be a company. Think about banking. The banking system is in control of all the accounts all the users and all the money. Think about social media, they control your accounts. What we want to go for is moving away from centralized system to decentralization. But the question is, who will maintain the data? So let's say A want to send $10 to B. Of course, blockchain can be implemented for multiple scenarios. One of the first implementation of blockchain is Bitcoin. So we can transfer Bitcoins as well. And we also have some other implementations because we are going to talk about Bitcoin later. So at this point, let's say if A want to send $10 to B and as a loan basically, where B will return the money with interest, let's say $11. So in this case, that $1 is an interest there, right? Now, in this case, let's say if A sends that money, who is managing it? Of course, till this point, we have a centralized banking system who will maintain the record. Now, we know that in the banking server, the record is maintained that A has sent $10 to B. But what if we don't have a bank in between? Who will maintain this data? Now, if you say A will maintain data, we can do that, right? See, the thing is, if A maintains the data, A can change it. Of course, right? A can say, I have sent you $20. Now, in this case, the problem is, you can change the data and again, the issue of trust arises. So what we can do is, one of the solutions we can implement here is what if both maintains the record? Now the thing is, since we can't trust A and B, even B can change it to five, A can change it to 20, and we have an issue there. So how do we solve this problem? So basically what we're trying to do is moving away from the client server architecture to peer-to-peer -peer architecture where we have two entities here. One of the ways to solve this problem is to have multiple people in the network, not just A and B. Maybe we can have C, D, E, F, and we have multiple entities. Now, what happens is every time A does the transaction, this transaction will be recorded not just with A and B, but with everyone, C, D, E, F. The thing is, in future, if A says, hey, it was 20, now everyone knows in the network that, hey, it was not 20, it was 10. And now we know the malicious person here, which is A. Even B can't change it because everyone knows the data. If B can't say, hey, I have received only $5 because everyone knows that B has received $10. So we can have multiple people in the network. Now the advantage is, of course, everyone will have a data and this is peer-to-peer -peer network. There's no central system here. Everything is peer-to-peer. -peer. Everyone will have their own data. Now this data is stored in a format of a ledger. It's not just a final value. It will have all the transactions. Let's say A has sent money to B, B has sent money to C, maybe D has sent money to F. All this data will be stored in a ledger. So imagine you can have an Excel file where you have all this data, or maybe you have used Google Sheet where everyone is sharing the same data. The only thing is when you talk about Google Sheet, it will be made by someone. They will be having a control and it is, it is a central system. What we can have is, we can have something similar to Google Sheet where everyone have the access, but also they will have their own copy. So even if you change in one place, everyone else will have the real data. And the beauty about blockchain is, it is immutable, which means once you store data, you cannot change it. Okay, so basically we know that there's a ledger, everyone will maintain it, right? Now the question is, how you're going to store this data? So let's say for this particular 10 minutes, okay? So on average, let's go for 10 minutes. Of course, different blockchain implementation have different time limits. I'm talking about the first implementation of blockchain, which is Bitcoin. Uh, so in Bitcoin, what you do is you basically have a window of 10 minutes on average. It's not fixed 10 minutes. We can have seven minutes, eight minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, but on average, we make it 10 minutes. In every 10 minutes, what you do is whatever transaction happened in this 10 minutes will go into a block. So that ledger will go into a block. In one block, you'll be having multiple transactions, right? And then after 10 minutes, you will create a new block. After 10 minutes, you will create a new block. And then that's how you create multiple blocks. And all these blocks are chained. How? So basically, that's why we have to use a concept of cryptography. Of course, we'll talk about cryptography in detail later. But at this point, imagine there's a concept of hash. Now, what is hash is, imagine a fingerprint of a person. Let's, it's unique, right? So every time you save data in a block, we have to find a hash of it. So there are certain algorithms for it. Uh, we have SHA-3, which is very famous. Let's say we are using SHA here to find the hash of this block. Now, how do you find the hash? It's very simple. Take all the transaction, find the hash. Of course, there's a different algorithm for this. Uh, we're going to talk about Merkle rule later. But at this point, let's find the hash of this block and then save this hash in the next block. 
Now in the next block, we have multiple transactions, right? Again, find the hash, but not just with the transaction, with the hash as well of the previous block. Now you will get a new hash. Now save this hash in the next block. With all the transaction, you will have a hash of the previous block, find the hash of the new block, and that's how you do it. So what you're doing is you are creating a chain here, which looks much similar to linked list, right? Because you store the address of the other node. In the same way here, we are storing the hash of the previous node. So that's how you make a chain here, okay? Now the question is, who is responsible to check the transaction? Of course, the transaction has to be valid, right? What if I have sent $10 and then no one knows that I have sent $10? And then still I'm entering that in the block. That's malicious, right? Because I have not even sent it. So we have to verify the transaction if it has really happened between A and B. And someone will add this block into the chain. And this person who is adding the block in a chain will get some rewards. If we talk about, let's say, a Bitcoin network. So let's say this person gets, let's say, $10 for every block they add. And in one block, you'll be having multiple transactions. Now, in real Bitcoin, they get a huge amount. So let's say they get around 6.25 Bitcoins. Now, the price of Bitcoin, one Bitcoin is high, right? You can check it on Google when you're watching this video. At this point, it's very high. I, I guess it's around 20 lakhs. Imagine 20 lakh rupees into $6.25. That's the amount you get for adding a block in a blockchain. And that too, you're doing it every, in every 10 minutes, right? Now, these people here, we call them as miners, okay? So in this network, all the other person are nodes. And then the special people here who's adding the block in a blockchain is called miner. Of course, you'll be having multiple miners, right? If you're getting a reward for adding a block, which is a very simple task, everyone wants to do that, right? Everyone wants to be a miner here. So what we do is we give them a challenge. Whoever solves a puzzle, it can be any puzzle. Maybe you can say, hey, what is two plus two? Whoever gives the first answer, they will get a chance to add this block in a blockchain. So we have different algorithms for this. We have proof of work, proof of stake, and many more. But then imagine they're doing some computational work to prove that they are the real people. You know why they have to prove that? It's because they are adding a block in a blockchain. Even they can be malicious. So if they are doing this computation, they are giving the efforts of putting this block in a blockchain, of course, they are sticking some amount, right? In terms of hardware, in terms of money, because to solve the puzzle, you need a good computing power. Of course, when we, once we start with Bitcoin, you will get this idea how much computing power is needed. When we, when we move towards Ethereum, you will understand how proof of stake works. But at this point, remember, they will do some work. So in the Bitcoin world, they are called as miners. Now, basically, their, their job is to add the block in the blockchain. And all the other people here, they are called nodes. The thing is, once you add your data in the blockchain, any transaction, it can be money transfer, it can be house transfer, it can be a gadget transfer. Let's say, I want to sell this gadget to someone else. So the owner of this gadget will be moved from Naveen to, let's say, Hirsch. In this case, that's one transaction, right? So what you do is everything is maintained in the blockchain and no one can say, hey, you have not done that because the data is there. Now, when you have a data, you can be sure that something has happened. The data is there in the blockchain and no one can change it. It's not like no one can change it. It's not like uh, it's a read-only memory. You can actually change data. What if someone some malicious person goes to the blockchain by saying, you know, this block, particular block, in this block, you're changing the amount from, let's say, $10 or $20. There's a change, right? Now, what happens is, since everyone here will be having their own blockchain, the moment someone changes it, that block got changed, right? One transaction got changed, it will affect the hash. The moment you change one transaction, it will affect the hash. This hash will affect the next block. This hash will affect the next block. And that's how you know that something has been changed. And now we know who has done that. Let's kick that person out of the network. So that's how basically you build this chain. Now, what we have done is we have just discussed the basics of blockchain. How exactly this miners work? How do you maintain the records? How do you know who has sent it? How do you know how much money someone has? That will be discussing in the upcoming videos. But just to give an idea, what is blockchain? It is the chain of blocks and each block will have multiple transactions. And who is responsible to add this block in a blockchain is the minus in case of Bitcoin. But the name will change in the upcoming blockchains. Once we start with Ethereum, the name will change and so on for the other blockchains. And all the people in the network are called nodes. Now the question arises: how you can be a node, how you can be a miner, that we'll discuss in the upcoming videos.